Hey everybody, welcome back to the PC Perspective Podcast. This is episode 684 being recorded on July 6, 2022. I'm Sebastian Peak. I'm Jeremy Hellstrom. I'm Josh Walrus. And I'm Kent Burgess. And as you can see, Brett has been unavoidably detained on... We don't know what he's up to. I'm thinking CIA, probably. Sure. You can support the site and podcast distribution by going to patreon.com slash pcper. Become a PC per patron of the PC per arts. And uh, we want to thank Ash, Ash, Ash this week. That's what's uh, written down on the script here. That's a lot of Ash. Mm Mm-hmm. It is. We now move to Laramie, Wyoming. Food with Josh. Laramie, Wyoming, the place of, of some of the best burgers around. You know, they didn't have much of a special uh, this week. It was a special barn show type for, uh, uh, pub chips. It had all kinds of goodies on there, but I didn't feel like eating like two pounds of, of salty potato chips with toppings on it. So instead, I I got the old faithful. I got the popper. The popper is two half pound patties. Or is it quarter pound? I can't remember. But it's still a lot of meat. Caramelized fried jalapenos on top of cream cheese drizzled with raspberry chipotle. It's, you wouldn't think it's great, but it, it truly is. I know those jalapenos look kind of kind of funky, but it's it's fantastic. It's it's the burger that they gave uh, Guy Ferry uh, when he came to visit Laramie. And went to that establishment. So if you haven't seen that episode of dry, uh, Diners, Drive-Ins, and Dives, you probably should. And you can kind of see where all the magic happens at Born in a Barn. Oh, and the fries were good, too. Our top story this evening, as usual, um, we are doing our best to stay on top of all of the ARC news, the Intel ARC graphics news, of course. It's always the hot topic every week. Um, and none other than former editor, editor in chief and owner yep. founder. Yeah. I mean, he used to do those things. Uh, Ryan Shrout, who was on Twitter recently doing his thing, talking about, uh, I don't want to pronounce it because apparently he does in the video. It's not gun near or gooner, gooner, gooner. So Maybe we'll have gooner? to go near. So Ryan sure. got his hands on retail Intel Arc A380 Photon 6G OC cards, only available in China. But he does say that the build quality is exceptional and that it's for mainstream 1080 medium gaming. You know, that kind of fun medium setting gaming that we all clamor for discrete cards to do. Mm-hmm. And it has AV1 hardware and code, at least. Not That's deep, kind of a though. big deal. I love the box. Into the unknown. Into the unknown. <laughs> hey everyone, um, thought it'd be interesting to show you guys. I just got my hands on the first retail packaging of an Intel Arc A380 graphics card. This is the Ganeer A380. Uh, their Photon series, the Photon 6G 6OC graphics card. If you can see here the Ganeer Photon A380. We'll go ahead and take that off. Dual axial fan design here. It's got four display outputs, three DisplayPort, one HDMI, two slot cooler. Has an eight pin power connector, optional for the A380, but this one, uh, this model is a little bit higher performance, and so it uh, it decided to include that. the The retail launch price of this was just over a thousand yuan, uh, which is roughly 130 to 140 dollars US. Uh, we'll see what the prices of it are specifically uh, when our partner cards come out here uh, in the US and EMEA markets. So this is meant to compete in the mainstream gaming segment. I know a lot of people are super eager to get their eyes and and some data on the higher performance products. Um, but this is this is uh, this is what's out now. The rest of the stuff is coming out later this summer. Um, and you can see actually, I did of course die while recording this, but I'm actually running one of these Gunier cards 
in one of our open air test bed systems right now. It's uh, playing PUBG at uh, 1080p medium. I'm in spectate mode because I died while, uh, uh, while unboxing the card itself, Un not unexpected. So I'm excited to see uh, uh, what people do with these cards, right? It still has its full gamut of AV1 acceleration, content creation capabilities, deep link capabilities, and obviously it can do some uh, impressive mainstream gaming to compete with the AMD and NVIDIA offerings in the same price point. So uh, that's the Guineer Intel Arc A380. I recognize that desk that he's at right now. Mm-hmm. Yeah, when he when he changes the camera you're gonna recognize the wall yeah oh yeah Just oh yeah you, oh, there it is the it's white balance is off PC but that's the colors. old pc per green yeah and bloom good old 1080p gaming on a 30 some inch monitor <laughs> it's more immersive that way <laughs> is that the uh alienware qd oled that he's got there it could be no look at the uh, it is Alienware for sure. Yes, that might be the same one I have. Not the, it's not a QOLED, but it is a G Sync. Uh, no, maybe it might be an upgraded version. Who knows? Do you want to watch again? Not no. right now. No, but sixteen thousand no. people have. Wow, wow no. that's impressive. That tweet and video have been the basis of a lot of news stories in the last 24 hours. It's nice that he was able to get a uh, a model over here. Of course, he, he knows all the right people. I was going to say, if, yeah. if if the person who's in charge of graphics marketing can't get one, then I... Then they're in trouble. I'd, yeah, they'd be in serious trouble. <laughs> Videocards.com is reporting... Now, this is a story from last week, but I don't think we talked about it on the show. Forgive me if we did. The official 3D Mark driver came out a few days ago. There's some interesting results that come from this. The Time Spy result with the original driver, or the previous version, 30.0.101.1736, and then the new driver in which you can turn off the uh, enhancement, APO. There is a significant drop. It goes from 57.57 to 49.29. Advanced performance optimizations were enabled by default previously, so it was not approved by 3D Mark, but now it is. But now and, it is. And now we can see why there was such a disparity between the synthetic benchmark results and the actual gaming mm -hmm. benchmark results. So these take them right back in line with each other. So mystery solved. They were cheating, but now they're not. So And you can turn it off. So that's good. Let's stick with videocards.com and talk about Intel Raptor Lake S. The new 13th generation stuff is coming soon. And this is ostensibly an article about DDR5 5600 native support, along with DDR4 3200, which is nice, because previously it was 4800, you know, unless you overclock. But the platform overview slide that has been leaked via Baidu, if this is real, it shows that there are 16 PCIe 5 lanes off the CPU, and then an additional four PCIe 4.0 lanes, which suggests that this will not support PCIe 5 SSDs, or not NVMe attached to the CPU lanes. Does this matter? I mean, no, but it's worth noting. Hmm. I mean, how many PCIe I mean, 5 drives are there right now? And what are they going to do for exactly. you? Exactly. Well, I mean, there's none, obviously, but uh, we're going to get PCA 5 with AMD AM5, mm -hmm. right? Yep. And that's coming up this fall, correct? Correct. Uh, mm -hmm. And they're talking about uh, massive heat sinks on PCI 5.0 <laughs> drives. So... I don't know why Intel wouldn't be doing it. I wouldn't doubt if, if you were to install a PCI, you know, one of their, you know, they've, they've got like an ultra slot that you do that will then change the graphics, uh, the peg slot into a by eight and it'll shunt off four lanes to that, uh, that other slot. That wouldn't surprise me. That would make sense because yeah. really um, you've got more than enough, bandwidth for a graphics card with a PCI 5.0 by eight. Mm -hmm. So I wouldn't be terror. I don't know. I, I, I'm not worried. 
What me worried? Yeah, we're we're nowhere near saturating Gen four by sixteen. No. There's no way. So no, I agree with Josh. Shift, the bottleneck shifted off of storage after being there for so long. But it will be an advantage for AMD, at least in marketing, if they're the ones who come out with full, you know, buy whatever lanes for your Gen five SSDs announced at CES and not shipping until next August. The motherboards now, uh, I just ordered a Z690 and the uh, heat sink for the M.2 drive on it is massive. I mean, massive. So, I mean, if they're going to go bigger on the heat sinks for M.2 drives, uh, I'm, they're, they're going to have to start moving graphics cards around or something. So there have been rumors swirling around that AMD is not done with AM4 by any means. And Tech Power Up had a story a few days ago about AMD possibly looking to expand its AM4 offering, and not just any AM4, X3D. Now, Graymon55, who's showing up everywhere these days as a source for these rumors on Twitter, says that they, uh, or at least it suggests, this is all rumors, of course, so take it with a grain of salt, but possible introduction of SKUs such as a Ryzen 5 5600X3D, I'm quoting the article here at Tech Power Up, Ryzen 9 5900X3D, or perhaps even 5950X3D, with the latter two featuring a mind-boggling 200 megabytes of L2 plus L3 cache. Would That's crazy. Keep, would this keep you on Zen 4? AM4. I'm sorry, AM4. Not Zen yes. 4. Yes. Um, boy, that really, I think that that would be kind of workload specific. Because, yeah, if your money is no object gamer, having that many cores available to you and that much L3, sure, why not? But you'll be sorely tempted with AM5 processors, which supposedly will reach those performance levels without the 3 dB cache um, and plus be faster in everything else, not just games. But do you know of any uh, workloads that really take advantage, uh, you know, in, in professional type stuff, takes advantage of, of that much L3 cache that we can test or that we have tested? All the videos that I've seen where they tested the 5800X 3D against the 5800X in both gaming and in pro workloads, um, the 5800X vanilla was actually outperformed it in, mm -hmm. in professional tasks. Yes. Um, yeah. Because of the higher clock speeds. Yeah. Um, the cache was not as, uh, as big of a deal there. So, yeah, I, I don't know that for professional stuff, the uh, 3D uh, vCache offerings of the other 5000 series would be a big deal. But for gaming... I mean, maybe um, maybe if you're running a VM or two on your machine, yeah. but why would you do that? I don't know. I mean, some people do. Um, or they're running... Well, what's that thing? Uh, Docker. Yeah, <laughs> I guess. Yeah, that, that, that might that actually make a difference is if you're, if you're running Docker or something like that, the 3 dv cache may actually help out your performance uh, across that. So that would be an interesting test. We should probably look into that. Windows 11 bootable disks and the revenge of Rufus. Oh, Rufus is a good old friend. And I've been using it for, I'm sure, 20 years, if not more. And they're one of the few that survive the switch from making bootable CDs and DVDs to making bootable USBs. We lost a lot of friends along the way when that changed. But they've come out with a brand new version, which has some interesting features if you're thinking about going to Windows 11 for whatever insane reason you've come up with. If you bypass the Microsoft Media Creation tool and just download the image, you can then use Rufus to mount it and set it to completely bypass uh, the checks for TPM and Secure Boot. It won't even look. It'll just install Windows 11 because, you know, they're necessary for Windows 11 to run unless proven otherwise. And the other nice thing is that uh, back in the day, you used to be able to yank your network cable out and create a local user without having to sign over everything to Microsoft or Hotmail or whoever uh, it was that you made your Microsoft account with. Well, now it hit the point where if you yank the network cable out, it says, naughty, we can't go any further. We're just, we're not going to let you. We can't talk to Microsoft, so you can't use your product. Well, they've brought that back. So you still have to yank the network cable, 
but it will let you create a local user again without having to sign up for an MSN, which is, you know, kind of nice if you're going to actually play around with Windows 11. On, on the enterprise and professional versions, there is still a way, although it does say tisk, tisk, tisk. But if you're on just the, the more normal flavors, then no, it just stops mm. you dead at that point. Mm. Yeah, I haven't played it yet because I hate beta software. And well, yeah. it definitely is that. I, uh, I was able to get around the Windows 11 creating an account by making sure that I was unplugged from the LAN and going into the BIOS and turning off Wi Fi. Uh, uh, so, yep. and then even after doing that, about a week after the install on that machine, it popped up and wanted me to make an account then. Um, and it took a little <laughs> while to get around it. We're back. Exactly. The register is reporting Intel ships crypto mining ASIC at the worst possible time. Isn't this just par Perfect. for the course, unfortunately, lately? Because we're still waiting on ARC desktop parts here uh, globally, at least outside of China. And they're shipping their crypto mining ASIC. You know, what is this? Would you consider this a crypto winter? I don't really know how to define that. Now is the winter of our crypto discontent. Certainly. Made glorious by summer Bitcoin sun. What? Okay, Bitcoin seems to be holding steady. It's still at uh, 20,000. And it's unprofitable, as far as I know, to mine on cards, or else we wouldn't have seen the availability improve and the prices drop. Maybe this ASIC is the answer for people who want to continue mining on, at some large scale instead of buying up all the GPUs. Be Quiet has introduced not one or even two or I think it's eight fans all at the same time. Silent Wings 4 fan series, which include the Pro 4. And then there's a high speed version, a three pin, regular four pin. I have pictures of just the 140 millimeter versions here. So we have a Silent Wings 4, which is a three pin fan. And they have a new mounting mechanism for these, by the way. The, yeah. the corner attached rubber thing looks really nice, actually. It gives it a very squared off appearance unlike some previous be quiet yeah. fans and the other ones are hard plastic yeah the, the other ones the previous ones had like a rubber a center but it was like a plastic corner yeah and then these they go all out you've got like an insulated rubber this is the pro so the way more mounting hardware options with this one and what's interesting about these is they're focusing a lot on radiator Usage, static, static pressure is a big focus of this. So there's a high speed. That's why it's got variant. those large. That's why it's got those large square corners on it, so that it'll seal against a radiator. Uh, I see. So if you're using it as a yeah. standard fan here, and then switch over to these for radiator use. Mm -hmm. I see. Maybe. I want to test these out. These were just announced on the fifth. They're not coming out until the nineteenth. And the prices are pretty good. Like, I mean, it's it's still twenty three dollars and up for a fan. These are high performance fans. So let's see the PWM high speed one twenty. It's going to have the highest static pressure up to twenty five hundred RPMs, twenty two ninety USD. And then you can get the highest end Pro one hundred and forty millimeters going to be thirty one dollars and ninety cents. No, no, that's that's not horrible. No. I mean, sure you can get a crappy one hundred and forty millimeter fan for twelve bucks, but you know, this is going to last for a long time and actually perform. Look at all the new money. Fans. Well spent. The, the pro models are interesting because they've done what uh, Fantex did and they've put a, a speed switch on them. So you can set mm. them to the highest performance level where the 120 will spin up to 3000 RPMs or you can cut it down to like mid, which is 2000 Um at oh, least on nice. the Fantex, these, I think that it, it may just be two settings. It may be 1600 and 3000, but. And we're incredibly easy to get at once you've installed the fan, too. I can never tell if you're being sarcastic or not. Mm, depends on which way you've installed the fan, I suppose. Yeah, exactly. If it's facing away it's from the you in the back, you know, 120 <laughs> millimeter exhaust on your motherboard, absolutely not. Cause you'll never see that again. Yeah. You got According a paper to the video, trying to get in there with the grill. <laughs> According to the video, the switch on these Be Quiet Pros is on the back of the hub. 
Um, whereas oh, okay. it's on the side of the hub on the Fantex. Hmm. Either way, it's, yeah. Again, depending on how you've got it mounted. Let's move to our gaming quick hits. And never mind the Harkonnens. The Emperor is coming to Dune Spice Wars, writes Jeremy Hellstrom. It's true. Or at least representatives of them. So now it's, it's essentially the fifth playable uh, side in the game. There was only the four original uh, Trades, the Harkonnens, and then some smugglers, and of course the Fremen. So they'll uh, come in. Apparently they're going to play a little bit different, so you're like taxing and bribing people. But, I mean, this is also where a sort of car come from, so chances are you're not going to be a pushover on the battlefield. They've also... Uh, added multiplayer because it didn't launch with multiplayer which is not something i'd actually realized and now it has it so you can team up two versus two or just do a four uh side free for all with a mix of normal people and ais and they've got a bunch of other things that are planning on doing like they're gonna uh, they show a lot of flying units and stuff but i guess they're not entirely incorporated because that's like one of their next goals hmm. yeah so they it might have been a little early release but it does look pretty if you thought Microsoft's Activision acquisition was over, it's not. It just drags on and on. This story published today at CNBC says, Microsoft's $69 billion Activision takeover faces com- competition probe in the UK. And the CMA said it will consider whether the takeover may harm competition. Gee. Mm. Microsoft never has faced any kind of antitrust probe before. So I wonder how they're going to handle this. Hmm. With a plum. So why does Thrustmaster have such a hot ass, Jeremy? Well, why do they still have the same ass like, a decade later? It's working. Yeah, this apparent the Warthog apparently originally launched in 2010, and so they they've been continuing to sell it at the 450 dollars it launched at <laughs> for the entire time, and people are still grabbing them, and I mean part of that is because well back in 2010 there was a reason to own a hotas system then you know we hit the mid to 20 teens and you know everything just sort of went away there was no flight sims no space sims no really anything to use it for but of course now it's come back thanks to microsoft and the nice thing is that thrustmaster has been continually supporting it and upgrading the uh software on it unlike you know what many Logitech users have encountered over the years where, oh yeah, we launched it. There's your launch day driver. Thanks. Four years go by and there's still no update whatsoever. And the other thing, nice thing that they do is that they sell a whole bunch of different uh, throttle and stick heads so that if you want to be driving an Airbus, well, you can actually install the proper controllers for it. Hands on throttle and stick. Correct. And if you're really cool... You can you can split the throttle if you're an F-14 and in a dogfight with a Generation 5 fighter. Google and Glance are looking to monetize your lock screen. Glance is apparently, because this is the first that I've heard of them, absolutely monstrous in Asia. Um, they're owned by a, an Indian advertising company called InMobi, who just does mobile ads. And Glance is their subsidiary who goes to the phone max- manufacturers uh, in various places in Asia, gets them to load their software on in the factory before it ever gets to a consumer and presumably is therefore unremovable. And whenever you're using your phone, it does like you sort of see that on that picture, Glance Now, and it'll show you little news feeds or swipe here to see this sort of thing. That's the thing. The second that you touch that, because you've got your normal wallpaper set up and these are just going over top of it. The second you interact with one of their little swipe me's or pop or click one of the notifications, it immediately takes over your entire home screen. Your set home screen is gone. It's now a full going ad for whatever company has paid plants to bombard you with ads. And you literally have to go in and dig around in the settings to go and manually reset your wallpaper. And then the next time you accidentally brush one of the notifications, which, you know, I'm assuming because they're already installed by the manufacturer and not going away anytime soon, you'll have to do the same thing over and over again. Well, guess what? They've been trying it in uh, the EU and have le- met with some success. Uh, there were a couple of sort of ad supported uh, cheaper tablets and that sort of thing. So you, you yeah, you, you're getting advertisements, but you also paid less for it. Well, Lance realized that you don't go to the manufacturers in North America. 
you go to the phone providers because they're the ones who own everything. And Google thinks this is a freaking great idea. Guarantee you that T-Mobile, AT&T, uh, Rogers up here is, are going to do the same thing. And you will now get these ads on your home screen, which will not just pop up, but will literally take over your entire home screen. I'm kind of worried about how secure this whole thing is because that's some interesting interactions deep within your settings just for touching a pop-up notification on your lock screen. The mm. position of that button is such that if you're using your thumb to swipe up to unlock it, you're going to hit it half the time. Do you think maybe they did that on purpose? And uh, what's the benefit to using Glance? Do you get like discounts everywhere you go? Are they paying you? Uh, well, in the EU, what they did was discount tablets. Okay. Right? So you're like you're getting an ad supported tablet for half the cost. So it is like the Kindle want. Plus ads thing, like the Fire it's tablet with much, ads. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Except a little more invasive. Let's move to picks of the week. Josh, we'll get us started. Me. Uh, you know what? This is an older card, but once you see why I'm kind of picking it, you'll understand. It's it's an MSI. RTX 2066 gig, and you think, uh, yeah, three forty dollars, three hundred forty dollars. It's not terrible, but you get a forty dollar off code, so it takes it to two ninety nine ninety nine, and then you get a twenty dollar rebate card that you can do, and that takes the price down to two seventy nine ninety nine, and that's when things start looking pretty okay, especially when you're comparing it to a RTX 3040. So yeah. Get an older card for a lot less money and just enjoy your gaming time. That price is what the EVGA KO was selling for, and that was a, that made a big splash at two seventy nine for the twenty sixty yeah. back in the day. Yeah. So we're back. We've we've gone all the way back in time about two, three years. Mm-hmm. <laughs> It's and only. now it's time to start rebuilding our civilization on the ashes of uh, the old one. Jeremy, your pick this evening. Don't you love the feeling of getting up off of a leather couch when it's really hot and humid out? What if you could replicate that with your mouse for 200 bucks? But a this, real mouse this, or a computer mouse? Oh no! Yeah, it's it's a it's a computer mouse, and it's it's hideous. It it's truly hideous, it, and technically it's not a, a mouse; it's a pointer instrument. Of course, but it has full grained French leather. Sorry, no Corinthian. And I mean, I don't hate the brass bottom, but at the same time, I'm thinking that that probably makes us a very light mouse. But can you imagine what? Your hand is going to feel like after gripping that for, say, five minutes. Well, and you try to lift your hand off it and it comes with you. For the audio uh, listeners, this is a leather mouse. Kind of Think about a leather saddle for a bike. And there are people who swear by those. They say, nothing will ever be as comfortable once you break it in. So just coat the top of your mouse with what looks like a miniature bike saddle and away you go. Yes. And it will, it will imagine like you? You, it, it won't be sticky. It will just, it'll feel right. It'll probably well, you absorb. give a leather mouse pad as well. That oh, yes, looks, they have leather mouse pads. That looks incredibly Which, high end. It's 200 bucks. It's sti- hand, st- I bet that's hand stitched. Of course it is. I don't know. I don't think it's expensive enough. I worry it that it's only $200. This, this could be an even more luxurious <laughs> item. Just put another zero at the end, and I might start to trust it. Well, it is pounds too, although that's taken a beating, so it's actually a lot cheaper than it would have been. Uh, it say, might yesterday. be like three hundred bucks, though. Oh no, it's it's less than that right now. Oh, it's it like two hundred twenty pounds, pounds. Really two hundred twenty dollars. Yeah, oh. something like that. Yeah. But look, look at how stylish this is. I mean, you don't have a whole lot of mousing surface here. Maybe it's a really high DPI. Do they even care? Do they give numbers like that? Oh, God, what? Are Probably you kidding? <laughs> What's the uh, sensitivity of this mouse? What kind of uh, switches are we talking here? Oh, Omron clicky switches. Do they even have such a thing as specs for this? Weight Restless options? Okay. performance. Yeah, they talk. Oh, there we go. Uh, it's a Pixar PAW3805, so it goes up to 3,000 DPI. That's it? That you, would you know, be the, the P. Okay. I mean, how... How, how much DPI does a banker need, really? 
I mean, yeah. some there's some big spreadsheets, okay, and ultra wide monitors, and I don't know. And besides, and this is a mouse for looking at, not using. You don't want to stain leather. That's true, especially if you have sweaty palms. You don't want to sully this piece of art. You know, get with off, the polished get brass get bottom on that, I think they really missed the opportunity of uh, making it a polished brass trackball. They they mm. did miss out. Yeah, horribly. they it was the wrong era. But mm. why would you even use it? We can place it inside of a shallow dish like this. And just look at it. <laughs> <laughs> Put it under your bonsai tree and just stare at it. What is that? Well, it could that's, be a an electronic pointer device, but I just like to stare at it. <laughs> Occasionally, I just put my hand. Enjoy the feel of the leather. Why are you stitching? Do the photography, and there we go again. No, it, yes, it, Kent would have done a better job, and he's pretty good. Mm -hmm. No, some of these shots were okay. I, I like this one. Wonder, actually, I liked this one a lot, but uh, this one. I mean, what is going on with the shadows here? Come on. Someone's got a lot of light sources. Mm -hmm. It's all the negative space. Not diffuse. And that's sitting enough. in a ten thousand uh, dollar hand uh, throne. This one's better. This one's better. It's better. Okay, we don't need to critique the photography and the pointer instrument <laughs> anymore. Uh, Brett is not here, but we have a posthumous pick. For Brad, who is no longer with us, I'm sorry to say. He was at a fireworks show, and he decided that it wasn't exciting enough, so yeah, he just he blew himself up. And it's uh, Micro Center, of course. Oh, let me pick a store. Let's see. Uh, there's only one in Michigan, Madison Heights. There we go. You can get a Power Color AMD Radeon RX 6900X for just $869. There's one in stock on aisle 33 slash 34 at the Madison Heights Micro Center. Sounds like they don't know where it is. It opens at 10 a.m. tomorrow. It's currently closed. The PCB is on one aisle and the cooler is on the other. <laughs> <laughs> this is, this is a reference design. So you're getting that classic AMD design for a little bit less than AMD sells it to you directly. So that's something. Kent, do you have a pick this evening? I do. I put it on the uh, on the dock. Oh, I see. Yes. Hmm. And uh, it's a it's a very strange night when uh, Josh is recommending Nvidia and I'm recommending an AMD card. So everything's backwards hmm. apparently. Um, but this is a pretty darn good price on a 6750 XT. Um, it's 549 with a $40 off promo code, which brings it to 509. And that's about it. You're good at math. My pick this week is a pair of headphones. Now these have been selling for uh, less than even this price. This is a 74.99 price tag at amazon.com right now. I saw them a couple days ago for 62 on Amazon. So keep your eye on these if you're interested in open-ear hi-fi headphones. This is the Philips SHP9500. And these are well-regarded headphones. And for good reason, they sound fantastic. They have a very detailed, very, of course, open sound. These are open backs. I would describe these as if you know the sound of an Audio-Technica open back, but give it a little bit better clarity. Where those can sound a little smooth and maybe kind of creamy sounding, for want of a better term. These are a little mm. bit more precise, but have slightly better bass as well, even though they are open back. 50 millimeter drivers in these things, removable cable, which is nice. And uh, they're very comfortable too. Plenty of padding under the headband, around the ear. They're nice and big. So yeah, keep your eyes on those. Uh, I know Prime Day is coming up. And they sent me some ad, like, 6% off with our card. And, I mean, I'm sure that there's some more sales coming up. I would absolutely recommend excellent these. excellent headphones. One problem with them, though. they You'll barely hear any audio if you just plug them into a laptop or your typical sound card on a motherboard. Yeah. They, they are hungry for power. You need an amp. That's our show this evening. Thank you so much for tuning in, watching, listening to the audio 
version of our podcast. And uh, we will be back again next week. Brett will probably rejoin us. If he's still alive. I mean, we don't really know. We don't know what's going on. With Brett and his mysterious other job that he doesn't talk In about. In Northern Virginia. Mm. Yeah. Mm, yeah. Suspicious. <laughs> <laughs>